My beloved brothers and sisters, I rejoice in the privilege of being with you this afternoon in another general session of conference. We have unitedly come here to worship the Lord and to receive instruction and counsel from our leaders. We have much for which to be thankful, and my heart is filled with appreciation and gratitude for the rich blessings from the Lord which are mine in serving with the wonderful missionaries and members of the Church in Asia. His work is growing and prospering there as well as throughout the world. As Jesus approached that fateful hour when he would give himself as the supreme sacrifice for all mankind, he asked those who challenged him, What think ye of Christ? I have pondered many times that searching inquiry as it applies in my life and to all of us in this time of history. I wonder, as the register of our lives is indelibly written and from which we will be judged, what the heavenly record will say to us in this generation of time. Do we fully accept him as the only begotten Son of God sent to earth to redeem the world? King Benjamin, as Nephi recorded, so testified. We read from Helaman, O remember, remember, my sons, the words which King Benjamin spake unto his people. Yea, remember that there is no other way nor means whereby man can be saved only through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ who shall come. Yea, remember that he cometh to redeem the world. The Lamb of God came to earth to redeem and to teach. He taught the blessed law of love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. The Holy One of Israel sought no earthly personal gain or glory. He strove only to serve his Father and to show forth eternal love to the children of God on earth. The Messiah caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the diseased to be healed the hungry to be fed. Every act of his life was one of deep inner love, compassion, kindness, and forgiveness. The poor and the downtrodden continuously had his benevolence, and as he came to the end of his mortal life, his heart was full of sympathy for those who had caused his crucifixion to be done. He prayed to the Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. As the dark and dreadful days in the world's history came to pass, Jesus was betrayed, apprehended, bound, and led away captive to answer the trumped-up charges against him. They taunted him with false witnesses who came forth to challenge him. They smited him, ridiculed him, tormented him. Finally, blindfolded, blindfolded and scourged, and in brutish manner he was mocked. His adversaries sought to take his life. No other judgmental decree would satisfy them. They accepted full responsibility for his blood on them and their children. They led him bound before Pilate, who found in him no fault at all. Then he was taken before Herod, who likewise found nothing of which to condemn him. With envy and malice, he was once again brought before Pilate. For the third time, Pilate found no justifiable reason to declare him guilty. He offered a substitute and to set Jesus free. The hideous cries from those who feared the Son of God called forth to crucify him. The sacrifice of the Lamb of God, so prophesied by the prophets for centuries, had come. Quietly, And without further utterance in his own defense, he gave his life as a ransom for us, that through him and by him 
we might have blessed immortality to be resurrected, united body and spirit. He further provided the way that through obedience to his commandments and receiving the sacred ordinances, we might have eternal life. His life was an evidence of his consciousness for all of his father's children. Again, I ask the question, what think ye of Christ? I bear you my solemn testimony and stand by the side of the disciple Peter, who, when asked the direct and pointed question, But whom say ye that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I witness it unto you that he is the divine Savior of the world, the promised Messiah. I reiterate the bold utterance of the disciple, Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of God. And I beckon to all to come unto Christ and receive his blessings and the blessings of heaven which await those who will keep his commandments and endure to the end. I certify to you that we are led by living prophets today who receive inspiration and revelation from the Lord. I further join my hands with those of Joshua when he said, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen.